Thanks to a court decision last week, there's a green light for the Boston police to begin a pilot program with body cameras. The ruling was on a challenge from the largest police union, arguing for the right to go ahead with the program were city officials, including the police commissioner. Also calling for the program to go ahead were a number of civil rights groups and community advocates. Our guest is from one of the advocates, the co-organizer of the Boston Police Camera Action Team, Shigun Udomo. Uh, thank you very much for being with us again. Thank you for having Shigun. me. First of all, talk about, uh, I guess, one of the surprising things that, that I saw in this uh, episode in the court was how much uh, this program was vigorously defended by uh, Commissioner William Evans. We were also very shocked. Uh, I, I will say that uh, one of the things we were grateful for, though, was that the commissioner uh, admitted on the stand that he was at first lukewarm about this program, uh, and it was through not only our efforts and that of the ACLU and other organizations, but through uh, independent research that he himself reviewed uh, that he changed his mind on this program. And so we were grateful for that and uh, are looking forward to a healthy pilot program. Well, well the premise from the union, the Boston uh, Police Patrolmen's Association, was that uh, this was supposed to be a voluntary program and the, the commissioner was forcing us to do at least 100 officers to do it. Mm -hmm. And they said that wasn't fair. And I guess what came out in the courtroom was that, well, that, that, that narrative didn't hold up. It didn't hold up. Uh, what came out in the courtroom was that the union actually actively uh, lobbied their own constituents to not volunteer for this program and went so far as to say that if they did volunteer uh, that officers would be sanctioned. Uh, the commissioner also said from the stand that as a former member of that uh, of the Patrolmen's Association that you know he understood uh, that what officers are going through was not that they didn't want to volunteer but that if they did step up that they would be blacklisted that they would be seen um, as uh, the black sheep of the organization and as an officer uh, you don't want to do something like that. Well I, I know they were negative about the program before there was an agreement with the city uh, mm -hmm. to move on this but uh, even after that agreement was there somehow some residue of that negativity? Yeah, absolutely that's uh, what the city's attorneys uh, pointed out that the fact that uh, there were still uh, materials that said that you should not sign up for the program despite uh, public statements from Patrick Rose and other members uh, that the, the agreement between the city and the unions were uh, were great for them. Um, but you know, the, the, Mr. Rose also said that uh, it was the job of the city to, uh, uh, to encourage people to volunteer, which in my mind left me wondering, well, what was the role of the union then? What is the role of a union? If not to, if you have forged this great agreement, to then encourage your members to take part in that agreement that is supposed to benefit them. We're talking with uh, Shigun Idowu of the Boston Police Camera Action uh, Team. The, uh, the way this program is set up is also important because we've seen around the country, I know these are just preliminary uh, reports that we're getting, but mm -hmm. in some places there are some problems. Uh, some officers, maybe they're, they're more exposed to harm when these cameras are in play. Um, so how do you combat that? So I think there are two things. Uh, so, so for the first part of that, yes, um, that this program is happening in multiple locations across the country, uh, and it's important how the program is set up, which is why we've been saying that there ought to be uh, some form of consequences in the policy, because what we've seen happen around the country is that officers are either abusing, misusing, or not using the cameras at all, um, and, and the way that, it's, uh, that policies have delineated. And so it's important to us that now that this is a mandatory program, uh, that officers are being forced to wear them, that there be some section in there that clearly states uh, what the rules uh, or which rules would be enforced uh, for them uh, not following those procedures. Uh, but there was a RAND study uh, that came out from the United Kingdom a few months ago uh, that according to the press release uh, or at least the article about the policy that uh, focused on one little part of the study that said that there was an increase of assaults on police officers for wearing these cameras and the union immediately jumped on it. But had the union actually read the the actual study, which I was uh, able to do, and we were actually able to talk to the two professors who conducted the study, uh, what, what you actually find is that when there is no policy in place or when officers are given the opportunity to either follow the policy or not, that this is when instances of assaults against them went up. But when there was a policy in place that was strictly enforced, uh, assaults against officers and against uh, citizens went uh, way down. Well, there is some disagreement out there right now about what part of the policy, and that is whether an officer can review footage before mm -hmm. filing a report. Uh, what about that? Yeah, so we, along with the ACLU and uh, several other of our uh, allies uh, in this particular struggle, have been pushing for the notion that officers should not be able to review footage before they submit a report. Now, this is not saying that they can't look at it at all, but it's important to us that you uh, uh, clearly state 
state, what it was that you were thinking in the moment that you used some type of force uh, against uh, a member of our community. Uh, and then after writing that report, you watched the video to supplement uh, anything that you maybe did not see at that time. Uh, you know, all of us know that when we're watching a video, it's very easy for our minds to manipulate what we see to fit a narrative that we already uh, have. Uh, and so we want to avoid officers watching video uh, and maybe seeing something they didn't see, but using that as a pretense to say, that's why I used force, even though that's not really the reason why they did. Um, it's important to us that uh, you know, accountability is uh, something that we've been pushing for. Uh, and I think that uh, the police department and citizens alike, uh, this is one of our uh, highest uh, asks and, and needs from the police department. So it's important that that be a measure that, uh, that is in this policy. What about the next steps? Because you, you, you've been involved in this for, for quite a while, mm -hmm. uh, in trying to make sure the community has heard about it. Uh, what about uh, as it gets into effect? So as this uh, gets underway, we are right now, uh, my team is, is planning to host a series of meetings across the city, uh, both in the areas that will have these cameras and those that don't, um, to kind of conduct our own study. We know and, and trust Professor Braga from Northeastern who is conducting this study, uh, but we're not involved with that process. We would like to go to the community members themselves uh, and hear from them how they're interacting with the technology, but also to make them aware of what's in the policy. Most people do not know what's in the policy, and it's important to us that people know what their rights are, what officers are allowed to do with this footage uh, and with these cameras, uh, whether or not they can ask for the cameras to be shut off, things like that. Uh, so we'll be touring the city, essentially, uh, both at community meetings and in schools to inform people uh, what the policy actually states. Well, we're certainly familiar with, uh, in most cases, uh, personal footage of police doing things, using force in ways that are very questionable. But mm -hmm. on the other hand, uh, with these cameras on, uh, there, there could be cases when the police are responding and there could be uh, bystanders giving them a hard time, and we're going to see that. Yeah, I think that that is the case. But, uh, you know, again, I, I think the, having these cameras on will catch that. And uh, if officers are to take it to the next level where they uh, ask uh, bystanders to, uh, to stop recording or they get a little hostile, uh, at least we'll have that particular evidence to show, um, you know, what's happening between the officer and those bystanders. Thank you very much for being with us. Thank you for having me. Shigun Idobu from the Boston Police Camera Action Team. In a moment, we'll hear about a walk for sickle cell disease at Franklin Park.